Hello, everybody. Valentin Totoro from Alia here. On today's Redwood session, we're going to modify or extend a delivered page using the express mode with Visual Builder ID. Okay. To do this, the first thing we want to do is go to a Redwood page. All right. Um, and the way you'll know that you're in a Redwood page is by looking at the URL at the top. So right here at the top, I'm in a fans environment. You'll see that Right now we're at faces, okay? So note this little faces within the URL itself. And let's actually move to our Redwood page. We'll go to personal info. Okay. We'll go to personal details and you'll notice suddenly the URL here changed. We now are in a Redwood page, okay? Went from faces to Redwood, okay? We're in the flow of personal information, personal details uh, and the page personal details start, okay? But now we know that we're in a Redwood page. And another way to know this is if we now go to our top uh, right icon, you'll notice that now we have this edit page in Visual Builder hyperlink in our dropdown, okay? And then you have the Faces pages and the classic pages. You don't have that. So what we can do now um, is edit this page. And what, when you click on edit this page, what the process will do is it'll, if you don't have any projects set up in your Visual Builder Studio, which we covered in a previous video, it will set up the project for you. It's going to connect the environment and effectively take you to a, a view of your page opened up so you could edit it. Okay. Now that we've opened up the page in the Visual Builder uh, IDE development environment, which sits within the Visual Builder Studio, we're going to go to the express mode. We'll cover advanced mode later. There's a toggle here at the top. You'll see advanced mode and express mode. Some pages will open up in express mode by default, and you can toggle them to advanced mode. Here, this one opens up in advanced, and we're going to switch it to express mode. It's going to switch modes. Effectively, it changes um, the, the, the side controls you have to pull things like REST services and what you can do with variables and constraints or events. Uh, or action chains. So we're going to go to express mode. And once express mode opens up, let me give it a second, which you'll see here on the right side are all the things that you can configure out of the box for the specific page. Okay. Um, so you can toggle things on and off. You can set new rules. Um, you can see there's quite a bit of options for this time entry page, for example. So we can actually uh, say that, okay, um, this drawer, instead of it, you know, opening up and being available, you can set it to false, okay? Um, and uh, most of these looks like they're true and false, but we'll just do that one single change. And then what we can do now is we can publish it, okay? And this will go through a process. And this depends on how you've set it up. Sometimes you can, if you are the project owner like I am here, uh, this would immediately, go, uh, and if you don't have any approvals and, and um, set up, it will immediately build your merge request automatically. I changed a um, jar value to false, okay? And I'll publish, okay? And now what's gonna happen, so you can see that it's actually uh, set up and it's gonna go through its process and we can go back to a visual builder uh, and actually see how the pipeline is triggered because if we publish that change, if it goes through an approval process, or if it does, if it's automatically kind of approved, I think this user is set up for a kind of automatic approve. The build um, job will, will commence and um, the, it will deploy it to the branch. And then the user will automatically see it um, available. And you can review uh, your pages here. There's a little play button that's actually going to, in a second, open up a new tab. And you can review the page with the changes that you might have made. Okay. This little error message is um, something that was done in a pre in a another video. And give it a second; it will play. There it is. So it opens up with the page in the drawer now not available. When it does open up, there it is still loading. Okay, so it's rendering it for you. Okay, and whatever changes you've made. Uh, would be visible here, okay? We can, of course, always go to our uh, Visual Builder Studio and see that the job was uh, processed all the way and built to the main branch so that when somebody does go into that development environment, they see those changes applied to the page, okay? 
Now in advanced mode, and this is how this message popped up, uh, let's go back and re-edit the page. Um, and this is of course the review. You can always go back to this. Uh, we can switch to advanced mode and advanced mode is where this message actually popped up. I'll kind of quickly show you how that happened. Uh, and that's part of an event that happened. So when the page loads, uh, it listens for that event to happen, that page loading, and then it invokes an action chain. And within that action chain, I have a notification that triggers and shows onto the page. So if, and here you'll see that there is a listener uh, on the VB enter. So the, the page entering and there is a description. So let me actually walk you through that. I'll delete this uh, chain and this event right here. Uh, we can actually go through how I did that, okay? So say we wanted to create a new listener and these are some of the lifecycle events uh, that you can wait for. And there's application level events, of course, if you're navigating, there's UI event, flow events and page events. But if you wanna do a simple notification, maybe that opens the, the kind of displays like the one you just saw that displays on top of the page. Uh, maybe you wanna do it right when the page enters, okay? You can even do it before page um, enters as you navigate to a page warning you to something or giving you some kind of disclaimer that we're going into a sensitive area, but we're gonna do it just on the page entering. So you would select the event uh, listener, okay? We're gonna create a brand new action chain from that. Okay. See that, yes, I've created it. There's my event listener too, because I had one previously. And we have various action chains, okay? And there's an action, uh, action chain is just a collection of um, actions that are happening, be them um, rest calls that are happening, notifications, uh, geolocations that are grabbed, setting of variables, whatever you're trying to do with on that page to code it. But we just want to do a very simple one where we fire notification, okay? And when you drag um, a notification here, uh, the right side um, has some required fields, like what are you going to actually say in this notification message? The first one is a description. This is just for kind of commenting that this is a enter page message, okay? And then you'll have the summary. Um, this is going to be, um, please enter your time. Time, okay. And the actual message kind of within the, the body of the message say, um, only enter time worked. Um, do not enter non-billable time, for example, okay? And you can also set if this is persistent, okay, it stays on um, for the whole duration of the page being open or transient only stays there for a few seconds and then disappears, okay, let's do transient. Uh, and then you can say it's gonna be like a red air type, just an informational or warning. Uh, we're just gonna do it as an informational, okay? So it kind of sets all the parameters within the notification and we're good to go, okay? Now, what I'm going to do is I'm actually going to also commit my changes. You can see this little yellow and say that I added um, the enter page message. Okay, and I'm going to commit those to the remote branch. Okay, I could go through a merge request through the VBS system or I could just publish it right here. Okay, it's going to uh, build everything for me. Okay, once it triggers, you see that, and then it's going to deploy it and create the jobs, um, the pipeline and actually build it to the main branch. And then anybody who has access to that dev environment will see it, okay? We can always go back to the page designer, okay? And you'll see here, our message popped up. And you can also play back. This is kind of the, within the center window is your kind of design and you can change it from code view to design to view to live view. Um, but we're actually going to go to the play button here at the top, which pops out a new page, um, kind of the actual UI view that a user might um, see. And you'll see there's our message at the top, okay? And it disappeared because it's transient. So very quick overview of editing a page. So you would of course first find the Redwood page at the top here, looking at the URL, go to the edit in Visual Builder, which will, create a new project, a new workspace if you don't have one already, or you'll select one from the list. You would make your changes maybe in express mode where you can select toggling on and off features or creating business rules. 
um, based on specific scenarios or going into advanced mode where you can actually key off lifecycle events like I did to display messages or to further modify the page as you see fit. And then publishing it, it would trigger off those build executors that I've talked about in previous videos as it builds the, the deploy pipelines um, to create and build the changes to the main branch. So hopefully that was a good overview and we'll catch you guys next time. Thanks for watching.